So I'd like you to think about uh, this quadratic here, y equals x squared minus 11x plus 28. And um, I want to know where its vertex is. And I'm going to show you two different ways to get there. And the first way is from the zeros. So I could solve this. I could factor it, run it through quadratic formula, whatever. But I, I could know that its zeros are at 7 and 4. And uh, so that means graphically, you know, 7 and 4 and 7, I have some, equa some quadratic that goes through those two points. And just knowing the zeros isn't enough to nail down my quadratic. I have like an infinite number of possible quadratics that could go through those two points. You know, I have all those possibilities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where the vertex is as well. So 4 and 7. So I'm going to draw something that, that is just like kind of a general quadratic, more or less through those two points. <laughs> I wanted to get it through those two points. So here's what you do. You cheat and you move the points. So there's 4 and 7. And one thing I know about quadratics is they have some symmetry. Um, in other words, if I fold it up right along the vertex, um, the left side matches the right side exactly. So this vertex, the x part of it should be right in the middle of 4 and 7. It's just right in that, in that midpoint right there. So I just have to figure out what's right between 4 and 7. And one way I could do that is just to average them just uh, 4 plus 7 and divide by 2. So 11 halves. So it looks like this vertex, the x part of this vertex, it is at 11 halves. And if you want to write that as 5.5 .5 or 5 and a half, that is absolutely fine. So I know the x part is uh, not 5, but 5.5. .5. And now if I want to know the y part, all I have to do is plug that into the equation. So I can say x equals 5.5, .5, so 5.5 5, uh, 5 .5 squared minus 11 times 5.5 .5 plus 28. And I'm going to grab my calculator, and that'll tell me what y is when x is 5.5. .5. So I'm going to grab my calculator and plug it in. So 5.5 .5 squared minus 11 times 5.5 .5 plus 28. And I get uh, about negative 2.25. So notice from there then, I know the y part of it, so negative 2.25. So there's my vertex. And so one way I can do it is if I know the zeros, I can average them to figure out what the x part is of the vertex, because it's right in the middle of them, because all parabolas have that symmetry. Plug that value back in and get my y value. So that would be the coordinates of this point right here, the vertex of the parabola. Um, another way I could do it, is remember when I when I talked back about solving this, you could factor it, or you could use quadratic formula. So quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if I run it through this, what that gives me is the 4 and the 7. That gives me this point right here and this point right here. So let me um, let me take this thing and just manipulate it just a little bit, just to give me a little bit of insight into this. So notice that I have this negative b plus or minus blah divided by 2a. So both of these pieces, the negative b and the blah, are divided by 2a. So I could think of writing this as negative b over 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So notice what I have here, and this is key. I have this number whatever this is, plus or minus that. So, so if I think about that just on a number line, um, I have some point, which is my negative b over 2a, some value, and it's going to be plus this value, so plus some amount, which gives me a point, square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I could write that a little more sloppy. And then I have minus that same value, so back the same amount, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So notice this is kind of centered, and then it's plus that amount that gives me that, and it's plus this amount, and it gives me that. Which is really interesting. If you look back to here, here's my middle. The plus or minus is here. So this middle right here must be that negative b over 2a piece. So if you just take this piece of the quadratic formula, negative b over 2a, that should give you the x part of the vertex. And if I do that here, remember ax squared plus bx, this would be negative 11 
uh, uh, negative b, negative negative 11 over 2 times a, a is 1, negative positive 11 halves, which is what we got. So I can get it two ways. If I know the zeros, I can average them, or I can take this part of the quadratic formula, and that'll give me the x value. And again, what I need to do to get the y is just plug it back in. All right, give those a try.